So there is a film called The Kerala Story, which I'm sure you've read about, if not heard about. It has been banned by the state governments of West Bengal and Tamil Nadu and cannot be screened in these states. My question that I'm asking today is, is it right for these governments to have banned this film? Short answer in my take is no. It is not right to have banned these, this film and I'll tell you why. Now, the Kerala story, for those of you who don't know, is a film about, it tracks the story of three women who are uh, tricked into converting to Islam and then shipped off to join ISIS. This is the basic plot line of the film. Now, there was a lot of controversy when this film came out about the fact that it, uh, the, it was accused to have been propaganda, to be showing Kerala in poor light. There were several arguments about the claims made in this film or the facts made in this, uh, you know, that the, the film uh, showed or the, the fact that it was grossly exaggerated as well. Now, there were several cases that went to court. The Supreme Court has dismissed most of those cases. The Kerala High Court has dismissed the case as well. Nevertheless, the states of West Bengal and Tamil Nadu have decided to ban the screening of this film. Uh, and they've cited law and order issues, that it's uh, spreading enmity and uh, it will cause law and order issues. Now, the Supreme Court has said clearly that if a state government foresees a law and order issue, it is up to that state government and its police to provide protection to the people watching the film, the artists who have worked on the film and the uh, multiplexes as well. You cannot ban content or a film saying that it could be a law and order issue when it is your responsibility to manage law and order. That's the argument. Now, the Supreme Court has argued again, and it said this in the past, that if you don't like something, don't watch it. Banning it is not an option. Now, let me tell you why I agree. Uh, because in India, we have a fundamental right of freedom of speech and expression, which is what this film is. For the artist and the producer and the director, it is freedom of speech and expression. We also have a fundamental right to livelihood, which means no one can stop you from using your hard work, your skill, your talent to work and earn money in a legal way. Now, the people who have worked on this film have used their skill and their talent and their hard work, and they shouldn't be stopped from earning money from that work which is what is happening in this case. So there are two fundamental rights here uh, that uh, one can argue are being violated, which is why this film should not be banned. Um, that brings us to the second half of this conversation, which is that if one argues that there is there are exaggerated claims in this film, that this is propaganda or this film is showing things that uh, will cause people to believe the worst about a community, generalize the worst about a community, or even hate someone, should that be allowed. Now, I accept that films have an ability to get people to sort of be typecast, right? If you remember, those of us who watched Rocky growing up, we all believed that Russians are grumpy, monosyllabic, humorless people who will just beat you up because that was the propaganda of those films. That's how Russians were portrayed to us by American films when we were growing up. And that's somehow in the back of our heads, that's what we believe about an entire country. So films have that ability. Having said that, uh, while there are many arguments about the details of this film, it has been argued before court that it is fictionalized based on true events. In fact, the lawyer, uh, Ravi Kadam, who was appearing for the producer of the film, said it's inspired by true events. And I quote, a film, things are dramatized. So it's not a documentary. And there's no onus to be absolutely factual about uh, you know, the details that are shown. But there are other issues here. For example, we have a government right now that is pushing this film. The Prime Minister at a rally in Karnataka actually said, and I quote, this shows the ugly truth of terrorism, using the word truth, while the film themselves have said that they have dramatized uh, portions of it. Mr. J.P. Nada has said this exposes a new type of terrorism. Madhya Pradesh, Haryana, Uttar Pradesh, Uttarakhand governments have made it tax-free. So what we have here are governments that are pushing a film because it suits their narrative. But on the other hand, when the BBC put out a documentary, the same government banned that documentary. Was it right to have banned that documentary? The answer is no, because the same rules apply to that documentary as well. The same rules apply to the film Patan and the color of Deepika Padukone's bikini in that film as well. But what we have right now is various arms of politics that are using content, using films, using popular culture to suit their narrative. And that is a dangerous thing. Which brings us to the last part of my argument. What do we do? 
what happens when there is this kind of pressure on artists? Why is it wrong to put this kind of pressure on artists? If someone is making a film that is completely propaganda, what should we do? If someone is stopping a film because of a color of a bikini, what should we do? Uh, I, I am still romantic about the democracy. I believe, and I, you know, the, in the fundamental intelligence of a collective intelligence of our population. That is how a democracy works. You have to trust the population to know what is best. In a democracy, we believe that it is the citizens who will vote and choose the government that's right for them. They will vote and choose the manner in which they want their country to be run. It is the same citizens who will go to the box office and decide whether or not they want to watch a particular film and whether it's going to be a hit or a flop from the biggest star or any kind of propaganda. Remember, Patan came under a lot of flack for the color of its bikini, but it was a huge hit when the people decided whether or not they wanted to watch it. At the end of the day, like it's said by our Supreme Court, that decision lies in the hand of the people. We cannot, we can't treat our citizens like infants and decide that this you will watch, but this you will not watch because I will decide what is good for you. The government cannot treat us like infants. It has to treat us like adults because we are the people who vote that government in and out of power. So whether or not the Kerala story should be watched is a decision that should be left to the people. Just the same way, whether or not Patan should be watched with or without Kini, whether or not the BBC documentary should be watched, should be decisions that are left to the people at the end of the day. Artists should not be put under pressure to conform to the majority view the law and order burden should not be placed on the backs of those artists and content should be 